All right, so let's go over your do now and fluency practice work. So for numbers one and two, we're working with this number line here. And number one says to plot one and five tenths on the number line. Um, so that would be on the sixth tick mark. One, two, three, four, five, six. The reason is each whole number is split in four equal pieces. So that means each tick mark is one fourth or as a decimal, 25 hundredths. So that would be 25 hundredths, 50, 75, one whole, 1.25, 1.5, and then 5 fourths, 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, which is one whole, 5 fourths. So which one is bigger? Once again, looking at our number line, we can see here that 1 5 tenths is larger because as a fraction, if we wanted to make it easier to compare, this would be 6 fourths. Down below, um, once again, we're working with our ratios. We're comparing two different quantities. So Pat bounces a basketball 25 times in 30 seconds. They want to know how much he would bounce in one minute. So I wrote my ratio, and I know that 60 seconds is one minute. So I need to multiply this by 2 to take 30 seconds to 60 seconds, which is one minute. So if he does 25 in 30 seconds, he would do 50 in a minute, or 50 in 60 seconds. How much would he bounce in 3 minutes? Well, so I just found that he does 50 bounces in 1 minute, so then I'm taking that and using that ratio over here, and I have to multiply both by 3 to find 150 in 3 minutes. And then here, I'm going to use the same ratio, or this unit rate rather, because it's a ratio per 1, and I'm going to multiply both sides by 4 and 5 tenths to find 4 and 5 tenths or 4 and a half minutes. Down below, we've got our distributive property. Number on the outside multiplies by each value on the inside. And then over here, we've got to combine like terms. The first two both have n's, so they can combine. The second two both have m's, so they can combine. And now for number 9, you have to see which one is equivalent. This one is incorrect because exponents are repeated multiplication, so this would have to say x times x times x. Um, this one's incorrect because if we combined like terms, 14x minus 2x, this would have been 12x, not 16x. Um, and this one here, we actually could not combine these to get 17x squared because this one has an exponent and this one doesn't, so you actually cannot combine these two. This was the only one that was correct, and you were able to use factoring. So this person pulled out a 4, and if you distributed that back in, you would get this. Now looking at our fluency, this was all exponents with fractions. Once again, feel free to pause this video um, if you need to stop and look at the answers. So exponents, again, are repeated multiplication. So whatever the exponent is, that means you have to take your base and multiply it times itself that many times. So here you can see one half times itself twice, one half times itself three times, one half times itself four times. And then same thing down the line. It's also important to note that when you multiply fractions, you just multiply across. So numerators times each other and denominators times each other. So all these unit fractions, you're just going to have one in the numerator every time because 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. So the denominators are just increasing. But then down below when you see that we're working with more and more complex fractions, you do the numerators will change as well because they have a number other than 1 in the numerator. Looking at our coordinates, so yesterday they gave you the coordinate and you had to, um, they gave you the ordered pair and you had to say what point it was. Here they're giving you the point and you need to write the ordered pair. Once again, all ordered pairs are written in terms of x, y. x is left and right, y is up and down. So r is 4 over, 3 up. p is 2 over, 4 up. n, you didn't go anywhere, so this is just at 0, 0. Z, 5 to the right, 0 up. So on and so forth. And so once again, 
this one, what mistake did he make for R? He switched the X and Y axis. He said 3 fourths when it should have been 4 over 2. And finally, once again, solving for variables using inverse operations. So here, 3 plus what is 9? If I don't know what I have to add 3 to, then I will subtract, do the inverse operation, and I get u equals 6. And then for every single problem, you can see that I use substitution to check my work. So I got u equals 6. Well, then I should be able to put 6 into my equation, and it should make a true statement. And indeed, 3 plus 6 is 9. So same here. This one's a division 1. What divided by 10 is 3? So I need to use the inverse, so instead of um, dividing my 10, I'll multiply by 10 and I get 30. I'm going to check my work with substitution, put 30 in for m, and 30 divided by 10, uh, 30 divided by 10 is in fact 3. Okay, so there are your answers for that.